All right, hello everyone. Perhaps uh, some of you are looking to change your eating lifestyle to a more plant-based, whole foods type of a diet, or perhaps maybe some of you are looking to incorporate more plant-based foods in your existing diet. Regardless, when talking about a plant-based diet, the question of protein always comes up, especially when talking about building muscle. And what some people do to alleviate that concern is that they will supplement with a protein powder. When I was participating in a vegan challenge, I was looking for a supplement product that I can use. And what I want to do is I want to share with you how I went about making that decision in hopes that I can provide you with some useful information. So what I decided to do is do a supplement review by comparing two different plant-based protein supplements. The first one being Vega Protein. Now this is something that is found basically everywhere. It's usually the first choice for first timers that are transitioning to a plant-based protein. After doing a little bit more research and after expanding my search for a protein supplement, um, I came across this company called Promix and decided to try their uh, plant-based protein supplement, which actually I think is much better and I like a lot better than the Vega Protein and I'll explain to you why. So as you know from looking at some of my other reviews is that I always check the protein yield of a protein supplement to find out how much actual real protein is within the supplement. So let's compare the two. So here's how I check the protein yield of a protein supplement. Let's look at Vega Protein first. You'll notice that the serving size is 30 grams for one scoop. Out of those 30 grams, I want to find out how much of that is actual protein. So what I do is take the amount of protein, which in this case is 20 grams, and I multiply that by 100, which equals 2,000. Now I take that and I divide it by the amount of grams per serving, which in this case is 30 grams. The end result ends up being approximately 67%. So basically what that means that out of every scoop that you get from this product, 67% of that is actually counted as protein. The rest can be whatever they add to the product. Now, that may not necessarily be a bad thing. It is when you start adding things in like artificial fillers and just just junk that basically does absolutely nothing for your health. Um, let's take a closer look at what else they added to this product. So although I don't see anything like artificial sweeteners or fillers and they state on their label that, uh, they, that this product contains 20 grams of different sources of plant-based proteins and they also state that it contains two servings of greens. What I don't like is that these ingredients are actually proprietary blends. So now let's take a closer look at ProMix. Alright, so now if we use the same mathematical equation by dividing the protein amount by the serving size, we get a protein yield of approximately 86%. Now that's about a 19% increase when compared to the Vega protein. And I think that the reason is quite evident. Look at the ingredients. You've only got two different types of plant-based proteins and you have some added B12, which according to the label, will give you 200% of your daily value with every scoop. All right, I just finished coming out of the gym. I was here at 5 a.m. It was snowing last night and I just needed to take a quick picture of this beautiful landscape here. Check out how beautiful that snow, the trees, and everything. All right, but you know what? Getting back to uh, B12, this is a big deal. Uh, B12 is such an important vitamin simply because um, of all of the functions that it uh, is responsible for. So for example, it helps keep our uh, nerves and it helps keep our uh, blood cells healthy. It also helps make our DNA um, so it's a very important uh, vitamin. Here's the thing though, uh, when you're switching over to a plant-based diet, um, you're gonna have a lot of people giving you objections. One of them is, you know, where you're gonna get your protein from. And I think that we are uh, kind of like already solving that issue. Besides, if you think that vegans, uh, people like vegans don't get enough protein, then maybe they ought to talk to uh, Tori Washington, which is 
one of my favorite uh, vegan bodybuilders. But anyway, the other objection that some people may come up with is that you're not going to get a, uh, enough B12 in your diet. And you know what? That is actually a very simple problem to fix. All you need to do is just supplement with a B12 uh, vitamin pill. Um, and, uh, you know, you take, a, you take a, a multivitamin every day anyway. So um, just taking another extra B12 is going to solve your problem, especially if you're taking, like, let's say, a uh, protein supplement like this one that we're talking about that has added B12. You already solved that issue. But anyway, now let's talk about actually what kind of plant-based protein is best for building muscle. Um, and a couple of things that we have to look at when considering the type of protein that we're going to use. Uh, number one is the, the digestibility of the protein, how well it's digested in the body, and plus we want to look at the amino acid profile. So let's take a look. All right, so let me clarify what I mean by that. In order for our bodies to use protein, it needs to be broken down into amino acids, and that's how our body goes ahead and builds muscle, repairs muscle tissue, and in some cases, it will also provide energy. When a food supplies all the essential amino acids that a body needs in the appropriate amounts, obviously it's called a complete protein. Unfortunately, many plant-based foods are incomplete proteins either because they lack certain essential amino acids or they have them in very low ratios. So what vegans and vegetarians do to solve that problem is that they combine foods to create complete proteins. And they combine foods all day long which will give them the complete protein that they need by the end of the day. They don't need to form a complete protein in one sitting. It, it could be in the course of a day. So for example, when you combine rice and beans you get a complete protein when you combine lentils and bread you get a complete protein tortillas with beans hummus made from uh, chickpeas and sesame paste with bread bean soup with whole grain crackers the combination of these foods create complete proteins now why do I go into explaining all of that well in the context of this video when I was looking for a protein supplement to use, a plant-based protein supplement to use, I had one of two options. The first option was to just buy a soy protein because soy protein will provide you with a complete source of protein. However, I'm not a fan of soy simply because there are some health concerns that I have about it. So the other option I had was to find another protein supplement, plant-based protein supplement, that combines two or more plant-based protein sources in order for me to get the complete protein that I was looking for. Now here's where I get all analytical on you, but I think some people will actually find this information useful. There's a method of evaluating a quality of a protein that's based on the amino acid requirement that we need and the way that we digest it. It's called the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, or the PDCAAs. Now, this system is not perfect, but it can serve as a useful guide to determine the quality of protein in certain foods. Now, if we scroll down and we look at this table here, um, it, it's no surprise that the foods that come from animal products, such as eggs and whey protein, are considered top-ranked quality protein. They are at 100%, which means that consuming these foods will give you complete protein. It's interesting to see, however, that soy protein is also at 100%. Now, some other plant-based foods, such as pea protein, are at 89%. Sasha Inchi powder at 87%. You have uh, hemp seeds here at 66%. And if you scroll further down, you have rice at about 50%. Now, probably one of the reasons why pea protein is at 89% is because it's low in methionine. Now, that's an amino acid that's important in the growth of new blood vessels. However, rice protein is high in methionine, which is one of the reasons why you probably will find pea protein and rice protein combined in a plant-based protein supplement. So now you see how you can actually combine different plant-based protein sources to improve its amino acid profile. 
But let me just tell you, if you're going to sit there and start looking up the amino acid profile of a bunch of different plant-based foods, you're going to drive yourself nuts. If you want to get more specific to your personal needs, um, here's something that you can also do, which I've done myself. Let's take a look at the recommended daily intake of essential amino acids and how you can actually figure that out for your own personal needs. Now, for the sake of time, I'm only going to concentrate on branch chain amino acids, which are the primary amino acids associated with muscle growth. I'll take the US recommended daily intake and multiply that by my weight. Now, I'm about 150 pounds, which translates to about 68 kilograms. That equals out to about 2,900 milligrams of leucine, 1,300 milligrams of isoleucine, and about 1,600 milligrams of valine. Now remember, all of this is basically just a guide. If It shouldn't be taken literally. If you have any questions, you really should be talking to your doctor to uh, get a little bit more specific about what's right for you. Um, here's another little thing that I do um, that might be useful to you. Now we know that whey protein is a top quality protein. And so what I did is I looked at a bunch of different whey protein powders and I took an average of their branch chain amino acid profile. So what I do is I compare the amino acid profile of a plant-based protein I'm looking to purchase and then I compare it to whey protein and I see how it stacks up. So as you can see, ProMix stacks up pretty well to whey protein as opposed to Vega protein, which, especially in the case of leucine, doesn't compare as well. And as you know, out of all the branch chain amino acids, leucine is a prime motivator for muscle growth. So I hope that I was able to provide you with some useful information. Now, some people may be wondering, am I a vegan? Am I a vegetarian? Like, where do I stand? And I don't consider myself a vegan or a vegetarian. I did take a vegan challenge. Uh, I did that for about two weeks. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've never felt better in my life. Um, so as a result, I have changed a lot in my diet uh, that uh, incorporates a lot more plant-based foods. Do I see myself making the transition to a fully plant-based diet? I think so, uh, but I think it's going to be a long transition for me. So we'll see. There's still a lot that I have to learn. I will conclude by saying this. Now, some supplements will work for some people sometimes. Good diet and nutrition works for all people all of the time, every time. See you at the next video. And also we'll take uh, protein and that's going to help you with muscle building. And so when you stack betaine and hydrus on top of all of that, how can you even tell it's even working? You can't.